Hi there, I'm Gary Sharp. This is the Hazmat IQ by Federal Resources Chemical of the Month, and this is our First Responder Offensive Edition FRO. Let's start off by reviewing the FRO system. If you get your Hazmat IQ FRO charts and look at chart number seven. Chart number seven has the four-step system. Step number one is we're gonna size up a chemical based on the first name. Anytime we're dispatched to a hazmat emergency, we're always gonna use the above the line size up. Out of the two size ups or SOGs, the above the line is the worst case scenario. As we're responding to the incident, we're gonna get more information using either the container or the placard or a name clue. If we're able to get the chemical name, we're gonna verify it in the NIOSH pocket guide and we're gonna look at the chemical physical properties listed on chart seven, starting with the state of matter all the way down to air water reactive. When we arrive, we're gonna arrive and turn out your SCBA ready to go to work so that we can do step four. We can go into the hot zone and play red light, green light, and possibly make a rescue. So for today's chemical of the month, we're dispatched to a hazmat emergency. We're using the above the line SOG. We're gonna, we're gonna assume the product is a gas. The hot zone is 300 feet. The vapors are heavier than air, and we're gonna treat this gas as flammable, that it has an LEL, a UEL, and a flash point. We're gonna assume that it could polymerize, that it's corrosive as an acid, pH red, that it contains fluorine in the formula. It's radioactive, it's toxic, and it's air water reactive till proven otherwise. As we're responding this month, we get more information, and we see this green, non-flammable gas placard. Anytime you see a number two at the bottom of the placard, we automatically know that the state of matter is gonna be gas. With the nine hazard classes, everything with the state of matter gas is in class two. Using this, we're gonna to go to chart number five, which is our placard chart. And as we look down the chart, we're gonna try and match which one of these placard families matches this one. If you look down here at placard number four, now when we go over to the right, we can see what the hazards are. Based on this placard, it can be flammable, toxic, and corrosive. By getting more information, we've reduced the number of hazards. If you'll notice what's not on there now, look at radioactives not there, polymerization is not there, so some of our hazards start to go away. That's the benefit of getting this additional information. As we go across the chart, the hot zone, 300 feet because it's a gas. The next column on chart five tells you what's our recommended PPE. If you'll notice, it's for first responders, it's always turnout gear and SCBA. Next listed are all of the meters that are in the Hazmat IQ safe kit. The Stay Alive 5 equipment, including the RAD meter, your F and PH paper you're gonna tape on your mask, your temperature gun, and then your combined uh, multi-gas meter CGI and O2. In this case, what meters might you get hits on anytime you're dealing with the, the placard number four? We could, we could see a change on our F paper changing yellow. PH paper could change red or blue. We could see an increase or a decrease on our temp gun and we could get flammable gas readings. Even though it's a, the placard says non-flammable gas, it should say a little bit flammable gas because there are gases that have an LEL and a UEL, a flammable range, that fall into the DOT non-flammable gas placard. So if you use the Hazmat IQ charts, we're gonna give you the real hazards to the responders, not just what the regulators at DOT consider flammable. For more information on our FRO course, go to hazmatiq.com and tune in next month for our next First Responder Offensive Chemical of the Month.